Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Taurus full moon at 24 degrees and one minute on November 15th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us expand into a multidimensional perspective of who we truly are. In galactic astrology, we work with almost 90 points of galactic interest, uh, tracing back to potential relationship with human galactic heritage. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There is a link in the description box below. And what you will receive in this video are three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the full moon chart that I see are key to this full moon. And also at the end, I'll give you three questions should you want to integrate this Taurus full moon energy some more. And are you curious about what's going to happen next year in terms of galactic energies? Now, 2025 Galactic Astrology program is available and the first 100 people are invited to a Q&A with me in January 2025. There's a link in the description box below for that, should you be interested in checking that out. This full moon is taking place opposite the Centaurus constellation and the fixed star Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio. And also the ruler of this full moon is Venus. Venus is conjunct the dwarf planet Ixion at four degrees of Capricorn. This full moon is an empowering one, and especially when it comes to discernment. This full moon speaks of that if we are following the rhythms of the universe, the rhythms of the earth, we are also helping ourselves to discern what's right and wrong for us. And this is really a practice to stay in flow. And ultimately, when all parts of that discernment, the way we individually discern our own truth, when that's integrated in ourselves, it also becomes part of our aura. And this full moon is speaking of the power of compassionate leadership, but also in a unique way, in our own unique way, and aligned with our own essence. That's what we are invited to work with energetically at this full moon. The past couple of weeks, especially also with the new moon in Scorpio, we're working with very deep energies. And this full moon is no different. The depth of our own essence is here to be worked with and related to and integrated. And when we do that, we also come forward with a conviction of what is our truth. We become not as easily influenced from the outside when that inner conviction is present. When we have a strong sense of discernment, we stay centered. And that is a very guiding energy at this time. How do we stay centered? Staying centered may sound like a concept, but it's actually also part of our way of discerning our next steps, our direction next. And this is what we are invited to work with to help strengthen that discernment at this time. Part of it is also that we're invited to embody this uh, truth about ourselves. And this is often an inner journey. And that's why also the past new moon and this full moon is taking us on a deep, deep inner journey to uncover some of the things, the layers that we may not have tapped into until now. Part of this full moon is also to show us and give us little tests in terms of how would we discern what is truth and what is not. And this is also all for practice, all for our own uh, honing of our skills, because this full moon is speaking of how important it is to express ourselves when we just know, and that in a compassionate way. 
because moving forward, we are going to be asked to apply compassionate leadership uh, as we move forward. Compassionate leadership is grounded in transparency, inner transparency, and feeling that we are able to stay centered and embody what we truly believe in. And this is the essence of this full moon to base that leadership in unconditional love, compassion, and gratitude. Because in the next months, we are going to be asked to go outside the comfort zone and sometimes go down a path that has not been paved yet. And that takes a desire to be a little bit of a rebel, but in a creative way. And that requires an inner strength, an inner, an inner sense of centering ourselves so that our own uniqueness can come forth. Another highlight that shows how important this full moon is that on this day, November 15th, Saturn is stationing direct at 12 degrees of Pisces, squaring the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And this is a gateway into our direction next, where we are going to be asked to apply our discernment by trusting our inner voice. Before we take a look at the full moon chart, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are for this full moon in Taurus. The first theme is compassionate leadership. And here we're going to take a look at Venus, the dwarf planets Ixion and Gonggong, and also fixed star Fomalhaut. And the second theme is multidimensional partnership. And here we're going to talk about Andromeda, Mirage, True Lilith, and Haumea conjunct. Shapley Attractor. The third theme is integrating a new direction. And here we're going to talk about the Lyra Ring Nebula, Hecate, asteroid Hecate, and the fixed star Nihal in the Lepus constellation. All right, let's take a look at the full moon chart next. So here we have the full moon chart at 24 degrees and one minute. And as you can see here, we have the moon opposite the sun uh, and opposite the Centaurus constellation, Beta Centauri Hadar. We also have a conjunction with the full moon to almost to the degree. Uranus is now at 25 degrees of Taurus, conjunct Perseus Algol. We have been talking about this axis, the Taurus-Scorpio axis, and also Perseus Algol and Beta Centauri Hadar many times. But this full moon is a ignition to an insight and connectivity that we may not have. This full moon is extra uh, electric, if you will, because the full moon is conjunct Uranus here at 25 degrees of Taurus, and Uranus is still conjunct Perseus Algol. The highlight here of this full moon and Uranus in the mix. It creates this galactic ignition, if you will, that may involve our own connection to our galactic heritage, but also our galactic guides. We are becoming open vessels for cosmic galactic energy. And this full moon is a opening to that. Uranus is in retrograde still, and this also means that it's an inner experience that we're going through. And part of our discernment to improve and enhance our discernment in terms of what we feel is our truth is enhanced by Uranus presence here, conjunct the full moon at this time. In our external world, it may also come as surprises. So around November 15th, energy here of the full moon, there may be things that are coming up in our lives that are completely surprising to us. And that's part of Perseus Algol's influence here as the intuitive insights may sometimes be, uh, come uh, as startling moments. But to balance that, we have Beta Centauri Hadar, which is often associated with unconditional love, 
And there is this deep, unconditional love that is a balancing force here at this full moon. The sun is highlighting the importance to lean on unconditional love. And this is not romantic love. This is deep, existential, universal, unconditional love. So I just wanted to highlight the Centaurus constellation and its importance as a balancing force here to keep the waters calm at, at this time within us and in our collective. Beta Centauri Hadar is that uh, stable, unconditional love that does not go away, that we always can tap into. And here, um, it is a balancing force to this uh, rather electric full moon. Uranus, uh, conjunct the moon. Uranus is the galactic awakener. Here at this time, we may also feel that our perspectives are getting much, much bigger. We may be asked to apply a bigger perspective on even our own role here on Earth but also Earth's role in the Milky Way, our own galaxy, and beyond in the universe. Beta Centauri Hadar is located at 24 degrees of Scorpio. In 2025, Uranus is going to spend significant time at the late degrees of Taurus going direct and uh, the third deacon of Taurus is ruled by Saturn. And at this full moon, Saturn is stationing direct at 12 degrees of Pisces, squaring the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. This is also showing that these late degrees of Taurus are significant for the movement forward. And here we have the ruler Venus here in pink that I highlighted conjunct to the degree with the dwarf planet Ixion. And we're going to talk more about Venus conjunct Ixion in the first energetic theme coming up next. So here we have the first theme that I called compassionate leadership. And we're beginning this theme with looking at Venus as the ruler of this full moon conjunct Ixion. And we have a T-square here with the nodes at five degrees of Aries and Libra, respectively. The south node is conjunct the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. So this is a directional leadership from Venus here conjunct Ixion at this full moon. This can be considered a multidimensional influx of universal wisdom coming through the supergalactic center here. And the nodes are aligned with supergalactic center for quite a while here. So Venus's square here with the nodes is in effect for a little while, but is emphasized here at the full moon. Venus here at this full moon is setting the foundation for compassionate leadership and the direction that we're going in next. There are significant messages coming through here through the supergalactic center as a guiding force, helping us to move into the element of air as part of the Aquarian age. So Mercury is going to go in retrograde in November and come back to this point where Mercury is now, but also proceed into Capricorn and four or five degrees of Capricorn around mid-January. So all the foundational work for compassionate leadership that Venus is putting together now, it will be picked up as messages to us by Mercury coming by this point of four or five degrees of Capricorn in mid-January next year. So between now and mid-January, this new direction is uh, being put in place based on compassionate leadership. Venus is also making a sextile to the dwarf planet Gong Gong here at four degrees of Pisces, conjunct the fixed star Fomalhaut at four degrees of Pisces. This is a very strong sextile and a guiding sextile, but also giving us an indication of what we are asked to apply at this full moon. 
But I want to show you this yard that Gong Gong, Fomalhaut, and Venus and Ixion are making to Mars at now at three degrees of Leo. This is also a directional yod helping us to understand what to focus on when it, this yod is giving us guidance to take action with courage through our heart-centered action, compassionate leadership from the heart, using our own unique truth to move forward. So let's break down this yacht a little bit more because this uh, combination of energies are key to the guidance of this full moon. Ixion in Capricorn. Ixion is Pluto's unruly brother and uh, Ixion is the authentic, very spontaneous uh, energy that is asking us to follow our bliss. In Capricorn here, we can also become a leader in following that bliss and showing our unique potential. Venus in Capricorn is very structured, but she's also heart-centered. So this is suggesting to us a energy of authentic, compassionate, heart-centered leadership. We are um, at this full moon. We are getting guidance around future leadership and the energy essence of that. Gong Gong is a energy of compassion, but from an empathic standpoint. Gong Gong is inviting us to ha have a relationship with our psychic abilities. Gong Gong is encouraging us to trust relationships where we are just in flow with others or within ourselves using a compassionate empathic consciousness fixed our formal health is also associated with angelic realm but also compassionate leadership and communication so this uh, yard here it cannot be clearer that we have a pointer to Mars here on where and how to take action. Now with Mars in the early degrees of Leo, it is to utilize our connection to our heart energy, our intuition to move forward next. I also want to mention that Mars is actually in a square to the Shapley attractor. We're going to talk more about Shapley Attractor and the influence from Shapley Attractor at this full moon in Energetic Theme 3 coming up. I have chosen to highlight the fixed star Fomalhaut here, and here's an image of Fomalhaut that you can tune into, and also on the sky map where it's located. Fomalhaut is associated with angelic energy, and combined with Gong Gong here, Gong Gong has actually been in conjunction with Fomalhaut for almost seven years at four degrees of Pisces. So here we have a seven-year cycle in that with that combination of Gong and Fomalhaut. So this is a strong guidance that are coming through here from the universe to us. And it so happens that this Yod is in perfect alignment here at this full moon in Taurus on November 15th. So here we have Ixion and Gong Gong highlighted. And first, Ixion as one of the brothers of Pluto. And the other brother is Orcus. But here, Ixion is the energy that allows us to develop our authenticity even more. And Gong Gong is that compassionate, psychic type of energy that we are invited to apply now. Gong Gong is also associated with a balanced energy between masculine and feminine energy. So here we have a very high vibrating energy signature at this full moon with Gong Gong and Ixion in Yod with Mars. So this Yod can be symbolized by this unique leader that is using heart energy to lead. And this is a strong uh, invitation at this time to consider 
and energy to work with to how we can step further into our heart-centered leadership based in compassion and gratitude. Using our empathic abilities, our psychic abilities that goes beyond the mind's desire to problem solve. This is a very powerful directional yod, I feel. And with Mars here in the early degrees of Leo squaring Shapley Attractor, this is an invitation to grow into our higher expression of leadership based in compassion, based in empathic understanding. So next, let's take a look at the second energetic theme of this full moon that I've called a multidimensional partnership. So here we have the second theme that I called a multidimensional partnership. And here we go back to Mars's position at three degrees of Leo, squaring the Andromeda constellation and the fixed star Mirage at zero degree of Taurus. This is a powerful square. Andromeda Mirage is associated with elegance and the flow and beauty of a partnership, for example. And here, we, a square is always the invitation to grow and expand into something uh, higher. And opposite Andromeda Mirage, at two degrees of Scorpio, we have the Shapley Attractor, one of the biggest drivers of universal wisdom. But at this full moon, we have the presence of both dwarf planet Haumea, who is there in that position for a long time, a long-term influence of bringing in new Earth energy. But here, what activates this opposition now is the presence of true Lilith at zero degree of Scorpio. True Lilith is here to emphasize the importance of using our unique life force, our unique direction, our unique inner creative force. True Lilith is well-versed in the underworld as well, where a lot of the unseen creativity is coming from. It's not always what we can touch, what we can see that brings the unique power of transformation. This opposition is suggesting to us that we are partnering with a multidimensional force at this time to bring new earth energy deeper into the relationship that we have with ourselves, but also with our environment. And with the ongoing opposition between Mars and Pluto here, Pluto conjunct Lyra constellation and the fixed star Aladfar, that is associated with liberation and the desire to liberate ourselves and stepping out, uh, taking a leap. This opposition is working with us all to help us go in a direction that feels true to us. And this grand cross here with Lilith coming into the picture here at zero degree of Scorpio to activate and Mars with action, true Lilith with the desire to go deep with this and to be unapologetic about it. This is a grand cross that is in effect at this full moon that is highly influential on the direction next that we're taking. So here I want to highlight Andromeda Mirage here at zero degree of Taurus and the combination of this grand cross that brings in the energy of unity consciousness through Haumea here, the continued integration of spirit and the physical world, but also with Lilith's true position here, where our unique desires that are coming from deep within are highlighted here and emphasized by Haumea and Shapley Attractor here, all of them together opposite Andromeda Mirage, which is encouraging us to build a partnership in flow. Andromeda Mirage is this elevated elegance of beauty. So it has an essence of love to it as well. And with Mars here opposite Pluto, this is also the transformational force that is now in action that is symbolized by this opposition between Pluto, Lyra Alatfar, and Mars there at three degrees of Leo. 
So how can you form a partnership within yourself with multidimensional uh, character? What I mean with that is that there's so much more to relate to than just what we can see and what we can touch. It is a invitation to go beyond and grow beyond that uh, desire to only uh, believe what we can touch and see. Because beyond the veil is also a opportunity to form relationships with guides, our galactic family, our soul family. And how are you establishing a relationship with the unseen at this time? And this is a invitation to build it into your daily life. Because it's not by coincidence that Uranus is conjunct the full moon here in November, in mid-November. Venus is establishing a platform for leadership in a completely new way. And that is built on leadership within first. And then we can step out in our environment to be a role model following our unique essence and uh, aligning us with other souls that are also leading themselves into the new earth energy. So the grand cross that I'm highlighting here in theme two is not a new grand cross. It's a continuum, but with Lilith's, true Lilith's position here, activating this underworld, this very deep energy within ourselves to step out in authenticity, that is what helps this energy to be so powerful, suggests us to open up to multidimensional partnerships. So next, let's take a look at theme number three, which is integrating a new direction. So here we have the third theme that I've called integrating a new direction. And we have a two-part story here. And we start first with Chiron here at 90 degrees of Aries, opposite Hecate, the asteroid Hecate that we're going to talk some more about. And I thought it was interesting that Hecate is now at 19 degrees of Libra, exactly opposite Chiron here at 19 degrees of Aries in retrograde. This is a very powerful reminder that we are at a crossroads in terms of our healing. Chiron represents this pain and wound that we are bringing with us to transform and transmute throughout our lives into potential and potentially a place to lead from. So it's a, a soul journey that Chiron is bringing in. And Hecate, in opposition to Chiron here, suggests that we are at the crossroad. So this duo here, Chiron and Hecate, are in square with the Lyra Ring Nebula, M57, at 20 degrees of Capricorn. Lyra Ring Nebula represents and stands for uh, the archetypal energy of human galactic heritage and some of the experiences that souls have had incarnating there. Lyra Ring Nebula is representing the deep polarity that many souls who are incarnated on Earth now have experienced from being, as part of their soul journey, incarnated in the Lyra Ring Nebula eons ago, perhaps. But the energy and the soul memories are still existence. This T-square is reminding us of those soul memories that we come in with that may be wounds that we are now at a crossroad with, that we are now ready to grow beyond. So if the first part is one of growth, a little bit of stepping out of the comfort zone with those squares to Lyra Ring Nebula, the second part of this story is very supportive. And here we have a sextile from Chiron to Jupiter at 20 degrees of Gemini, conjunct the Lepus uh, constellation and the fixed star Nihal at 20 degrees of Gemini here. That sextile is helping us to expand into a higher vibration. Nihal is associated with also with empathic energy, 
going beyond the integrating parts of ourselves that are due to be integrated back to the whole. And in addition, Jupiter is making a trine to Hecate uh, there as well. So this wedge is very supportive, the sextile and trine here to Jupiter, the integration of parts of ourselves that we may have forgotten or not applied yet, that in part of us that does not have to speak, that just knows. We also have a beautiful opposition currently of Jupiter conjunct Lipus Nihal here to the great attractor. The great attractor is associated with integration and especially also with parts of ourselves that we may have forgotten or not been in contact with yet. So if we bring this together, this is the story of the new direction, a little bit of going outside the comfort zone to address first growing beyond some of the soul memories here that is associated with our human galactic heritage and the Lyra constellation, but also moving into more of an expansive energy, tapping into higher vibrating Blu-ray energy. Blu-ray is associated with Nihal as well. To choose to apply a higher vibrating energy as part of integrating back fractals of ourselves that we may not have been in contact with yet. So here we have the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 there on the sky map, but also a image of the Ring Nebula for you to tune into. I also added Hecate here because Hecate has a energy of past, present, and future. She represents the uh, all potential energy that is available to us right now. It, there is no limitation uh, as to how we can. Uh, create our own direction next, connect multidimensionally. And Hecate is a beautiful example of uh, an energy that there is no limitation. She works within the domain of the past, present, and future simultaneously. Hecate energy is central in discerning where we go next. And often she shows up at times where we need to use extra discernment. And here we have Lipus constellation, which is also called a hare. And Nihal there, I've highlighted. Nihal is associated with blue ray energy, very high vibrating, but also that empathic part of ourselves that just knows. So here we have the invitation by Jupiter being conjunct Nihal here to expand that part of ourselves, to help integrate those parts of ourselves that we may not be in contact with yet, or that we felt have been missing. And part of it is our connection with our intuition, connection with our heart energy. And once we connect into that, we are also on a direction of wholeness. And when we connect with our whole self in that ability, we are also moving forward without being influenced by the ego. So here, at this full moon, we have a beautiful invitation to expand into a compassionate, empathic way of relating and still working with soul memories that suggests polarity. And how to relate to that is one of the biggest invitations of this full moon. So this full moon is a infusion of galactic influences through that conjunction of the full moon to Uranus, first of all, but also based in unconditional love with Venus's conjunction to Ixion here. Unconditional love that is allowed to be taken into a unique place, a unique expression. Ixion is really influencing Venus here to step out in a authentic way and invite heart energy and communicate with others through our heart. And that is a very expansive way for many to interact with others. And that opposition between Mars and Pluto here conjunct Lyra Aladfar. Lyra Aladfar is so strongly influencing this axis through the desire to liberate. And also with Hecate and Lilith, 
here in the mix. This is a, a call for stepping out into our true self and leading our lives that way and see what happens. Because here, we are not asked to rely on problem solving anymore. Moving forward, we're asked to follow our uh, intuition, follow our uh, flow, what feels true to us. So here we have a powerful full moon in Taurus. Ultimately, unconditional love as infused by the Centaurus constellation and Beta Centauri Hadar here, highlighted by the sun at this full moon, is the platform for how we are moving forward into uh, December and into next year. This is a call for basing our uh, next uh, intention on unconditional love and compassionate leadership, both within ourselves, but also with others. We are invited to strengthen our partnerships with our guides, our galactic family, our soul family, our ancestors, beyond what is we can see and relate to in physical world. This is the next level of energy that both Gong Gong and Ixion and Homea are suggesting to us and strongly are infusing into our solar system at this time. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this full moon in Taurus energy some more? The first question is, what does compassionate heart-centered leadership mean to you? And first, that leadership of self-mastery and the way we do that is also a part of this question and the primary focus at this time, since Uranus is in retrograde conjunct the moon here, this is an inner journey that we are asked to first establish for ourselves to influence the way we lead our own life. Secondly, how can you establish the unseen relationships with your guides, your galactic family, your soul family? This is a long-term evolution, of course, but it's uh, also a opportunity at this full moon to strengthen those multidimensional relationships. The second question is, how do you best discern your next steps moving forward? And this is a invitation to utilize the insights and advice from this full moon however you feel it's true for you. One of humanity's current collective challenges is to how to uh, move away from a problem solving with our minds only and take that as a truth. What these energies are suggesting to us at this full moon is to use our heart energy to discern our next steps. And that can be experienced very differently from using our mind that we're so used to doing. The third question is, how can you act on what you just know? This is a question that we are often doubting ourselves on things we just know is our own truth. But this is with Mars opposite Pluto here. Mars is really uh, asking us to determine how we can act on things that are truth for us. And often those are the things that we just know is truth for us without having to explain it. And if there is self-doubt coming up there on acting on things that you just know is your truth, this may be an invitation that there are parts that are yet to be integrated within you to become whole. And because when we become whole, we just know and we just do. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. I also have the 2025 Galactic Astrology program available now. And the first hundred people are invited to a Q&A with me in January 2025. So welcome to check that out. 
Thank you for listening and watching to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Next is the new moon in Sagittarius on December 1st. I can't wait to come back soon with another video. And until then, bye.